This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Keystone Bullet Ultralight Model 221 RBS. Alright, so first thing you'll notice is you have power stabilizer jacks. The switch is up in the front on the off door side. I'll show you that when we get there. You've got a power awning with LED strip. Your stairs fold into the trailer and obviously um, if, when you fold it down you can adjust the length of the legs by pulling the pin. There's one on each side. Just pull that pin and slide them up and down accordingly. Okay. Um, this is uh, TV signal and power and there's a backing plate for a mounting bracket for a TV if you were interested in doing that. You've got outside speakers. This is your hitch here. It's a Husky center line. Um, weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. So it's a, it's a, uh, a good one. Okay, so let me move this way. Power tongue jack. And if this ever fails, you can pull this plug right here on the top. And um, there's a, you can use a three-quarter inch crank, which this comes with one, or you can use a, a three-quarter inch six-point socket on a drill, okay? Uh, you got two LP tanks that are full with an automatic changeover regulator, deep cycle marine battery, and this is the kill switch for the battery. Right now it's on, which is the way you want to keep it unless you're in storage, okay? Otherwise, you always keep it on so, the, so the, the, your power converter will charge the battery, and when you're towing it, your tow vehicle will charge it, so you always want it on except when you're in storage. And this is just a hookup in case you want to get a solar panel to charge the battery. Alright, so, of course, um, let me look down here. Now this, the, the, this is the outdoor side, and there's the, the um, power stabilizer right there on the side. You see there's a shaft with a pin going through it? Well, you can crank that manually. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here. Let me see if I get closer. But you see the crank on the left there? That one will fit right on there. And you can crank it manually if, um, if it happens to fail, okay? Both front and rear. Well, we're looking at this. This type of slide out you have here is called an Accu slide, just so you know. All right. And of course, you have a sprayer here. You can bypass your water heater from here. All right. Um, you can winterize from here. Uh, you have your hookups right here. This is your city water connection right here, which is the most common way to get water to the trailer. Now, if you go to a campground that doesn't have water, city water, or, or plumbing on the campsites, you can pre-fill your tank right here, your onboard tank, and use the onboard pump to pump the water. This one here is a black tank flush. So after you dump your black tanks, you can hook the hose up there to the dump station, leave your black tank valve open and turn it on, it'll flush out your black tank really well. And this port is used to winterize. It goes with the bypass and the winterize and that's the port where you hook the hose up, okay? Um, so there's a prep, this, apparently there's a prep on the roof for a satellite hookup, or I'm sorry, for, um, yeah, for this, to put a satellite up on the roof if you wanted to do that. That's right there. And of course, this is a satellite and cable through. It's a signal booster. Okay. I'm going to have to walk back around the other way because we're kind of close to the wall here. So, let's go this way. Okay. Now, let me get to the dump valves here. Oh, right here. Okay, so here's your, your gray tank valve and then your black tank valve here. The black tank is toilet water and waste. The gray tank is sink and shower water. So you're going to dump the black tank first because it's the dirtiest of the water. Then you'll dump the gray to clean it out a little bit. And then leave the black tank valve open and hook your hose up at the flush up there and you can uh, spray out the inside, okay? All right, so that's important. This is your power cord. It's 30 amp and 30 feet long. You have a ladder, which is a great thing because you can inspect your roof easily. You don't have to drag the ladder out. You have to inspect the roof every 90 days, so you can if you can walk up there. You could, uh, if you don't like it at heights, you can send somebody else up there. Just be very careful. Um, you want to check all the sealant for cracking and separation. Make sure it's good and tight. Make sure there's no damage to the vent covers or 
any of the any of the roof attachments you know damaged by low branches or a, a road debris flipping up there look at the roofing material make sure it's in good shape just do that regularly and if you see any issues get it taken care of it's important this device or this hookup right here is for a let me see if I can get a picture of it is the uh, it shows this is pre-wired for a backup camera so you want to uh, if you want a backup camera it, it, we do sell them here you can uh, if fits right into there you can um, basically you get a monitor up in the in your dry in your tow vehicle and uh, every time you turn on your running lights it'll light up the camera so you can see behind you when you're backing up or when you're going down the road if you want even so all right so this is the outside of your water heater the switches to control it are inside this works on both gas and electric um, this is the drain plug right here so keep that in mind that's where you would drain it that's an inch and a sixteenth socket go on there with a six pointer okay so keep that in mind I'll show you the switches when we get in there okay so as we come in the door we'll do this first this this device right here is your uh, power converter so what it does it converts AC to DC power so on this side you see you've got regular household type circuit breakers here just like you'd see at home they're 120, 110, 120 AC, um, and they're all labeled, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here, and you got 12 volt fuses here, and they're all labeled. Also, this is a battery tender, so when you're plugged in, it'll always send so much energy your battery needs up front and keep it charged up. Okay, this is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It's green, as you can see, you always want it to be green. If not, you get it serviced. Also, if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your uh, battery's low. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the test here. LP is good. The carbon monoxide coming up, and finally low battery alarm. And then back to green. Obviously, if it goes off, take everybody outside, uh, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, and figure out what's going on. Okay. So this is your thermostat. It's very self-explanatory. You just hit the mode button and go through all the modes. Set the temperature there and the fan. Try to... Whoops, let me shut it back off. The fan, you should always try to run on automatic if you can. Alright, this is your, your panel here. So, basically, your slide room is right here. In and out. Remember I told you that's an AccuSlide. Your awning, right here. Uh, never leave the awning out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in. You can light your water heater on gas right here, light it on electric right there. You turn your water pump on there. Remember I told you the water pump is for pumping water out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water. You also use it to winterize the trailer. And these are just lights here, okay? Never run the water heater without water in it, without water in the water heater tank. So always make sure that it's got water in it before you turn it on. Um, Shut your levels, battery charged, fresh water's got a third in there, black is empty. Gray is empty. It graduates up in one third increments, so once you get past two thirds, you gotta start thinking about dumping your black and gray tank. All right. Okay, so sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. This this is a GFCI, so all the plugs are wired through the GFCI, even the one on the outside. So if you if you go if you're using the, the outside uh, uh, socket and uh, it pops, you will uh, you know, reset it there. The toilet, the thing to remember if you don't know RV toilets, this is the flush pedal here. Alright. You can't use it dry. By dry, I'm not talking about the toilet bowl, I'm talking about the black tank, which is directly below there. Okay, that's just residual water pressure you're seeing right there. So what you do is, so you pull into the campground, you plug in your trailer, you hook up the water, then you'll come in here with your chemical, to your toilet chemical. You'll dump your one dose of toilet chemical in there, you'll step on the pedal, water will come swirling out into the black tank below. You put about a gallon in there. Some people use more, but just whatever works for you. The bottom line is you got to have water and chemical in there when you first start using it. You never use it dry. Otherwise the smell will be uh, unbearable and it also can get clogged up. So uh, make sure you always, let's, let's just say you, you, um, you dumped your tank, your black tank, but you're still going to camp on the same site for another week. After you dump it, you repeat the procedure. You come in here, chemical and water, okay? You also, just, just so you know, this will default to about this much water when you flush it. 
If you want more water in the bowl, which most people do, just push the pedal down a little bit. You see the trap hasn't opened yet? You push it down there, it'll turn on the water valve, but leave the trap shut, and you can fill it up as full as you want. Always run your fan with the shower to pull the humidity out. That's important. Okay. Microwave works like any other microwave. Range hood with a fan and a light. Um, I'm not sure if he's got the... Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure the gas is on. Let's, let's give it a shot. This is the sparker. Oh, he doesn't have it on. Okay, let's go up front and turn it on. Okay. So here we go. Okay, back inside. I'm going to take a few pops to get the gas up to the appliance now, but we'll do it. Like I said, this is the spark it. You turn this clockwise. Oh, there we go. So they both lit, as you can see. Now the oven, this is the oven knob here, the one on the right. And the oven has a pilot light all the way at the back. I can spark so you can see it back there. So that's the pilot light. So what you do as you go to the oven knob, you go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot. You depress it and hold it during the whole procedure. Then you're going to go to the left and turn the sparker clockwise to spark it. You keep sparking until it lights. After it lights, you still hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat it up. Then you go to whatever temperature you choose. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay, your radio plays um, discs, CDs, and DVDs, of course. You can stream off the USB there. It has Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly with your phone or your tablet. This HDMI is an in, so let's say you want to go into the system with a, uh, a Blu-ray player, a portable Blu-ray player, or, or maybe one of those game machines. Um, you just sit in here, plug it in, and then go right through the, GM, the HDMI and then select the source on your, on your, on your unit there. Okay. I told you there's a signal booster. You saw it outside. It's it's um it was a blue light there on the outside panel. Okay. Now uh, that your TV obviously works like any other TV, and both of these have a remote, the radio, and the, the TV, of course. There's storage underneath the bed. This is your escape window, which works like this. You would push it all the way through, of course. Then you uh, grab a hold of this red tab and pull the screen out, and then you can exit that way. Okay. The tabletop, you can disconnect it from the, the post holding it up, and you can lay it down onto these cleats here. You see them all the way around. There's five of them. And turn this into a bed. And last but not least, your refrigerator is a 12-volt compressor refrigerator. It's on. It's cold. All right. So this runs off of 12-volt DC. So... Um, when you're pulling your down the road, your battery will keep it running, and your tow vehicle will be charging your battery. When you plug it in, uh, your power converter will be converting AC to DC and sending power to to your uh, your 12 volt refrigerator. So keep that in mind. All right, so I think I've covered everything pretty much. Obviously, there's a smoke alarm. But let me look just to make sure here. Okay, yeah, we're good. So. Um, First, I want to thank you for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And second of all, uh, remember what I said about inspecting the roof. That's very important. Any sealant you see put on the, the uh, trailer at the factory should be inspected and touched up as needed. Okay? Thank you very much.